your smart home is killing you. Well, not specifically the tech inside your smart home, but it's very possible that the air inside it could be. Are you worried yet? Well, don't be, because I've been slowly building some incredible routines using a bunch of smart home tech that can help me build an automated system to keep the air and environment in a sweet spot so I don't suddenly end up dropping dead. And today, I'm gonna to show you what tech I'm using so that you guys can do the same. Now, normally I'm not usually a worry wart when it comes to air quality, but after binge watching renovation programs, all you see is damp, asbestos, mold, and wood burners, all of the things which the death throes of the dying tabloid media would have you believe are going to kill you in your sleep. I can't help but at least be a little bit concerned about my air quality. Now, without disputing the accuracy of tabloid reports, all I can think is that it can't harm to have a better grasp on my air quality. If not to protect from things like that, then to make sure that the temperature remains constant and that I minimize things like pollen so that my wife doesn't scratch her eyes out with hay fever during the summer. And if that isn't enough, as a little sweetener, a lot of these gadgets and automations and tricks that I've built into this episode could actually save you some money too, if you choose to use them. So I've narrowed it down to three things I want to try and control in order to get a healthy indoor environment. Humidity, VOCs, and temperature. Humidity is a key one for making sure that mold and damp can't thrive. The higher the relative humidity and the more mold and damp that can get hold and thrive. I found a really handy graph which shows the optimum zone for relative humidity. And you can see that anything over 60, it starts getting pretty bad. But what I didn't realize is it also starts to increase bacteria and viruses and mites as well. And then to scare you even more, if we get the air too dry, bacteria and viruses can also spread and you have the increased chance of respiratory infections too. So to maximize my environment quality, I need the relative humidity to sit between 50 and 60 at all times. Now, once I have a wrangle hold on the humidity, I want to control and monitor the volatile organic compounds in the air. These are substances that evaporate at room temperature and can cause all sorts of horrid effects to the body. VOCs are emitted from things like paints, preservatives, aerosols, and even those nice little smelly candles that everyone seems to have everywhere. Those things are real killers. But in all seriousness, it's not necessarily those that I'm worried about. It's perhaps one of the biggest emitters of VOCs, wood burners, which I have. So by monitoring the VOC count, I can understand when my wood burner is literally trying to murder me. And lastly, moving on from the wood burner, I wanna create a constant temperature, which I think could be the key to this entire episode. Temperature plays a big factor on the other two things that I'm trying to control. And often whenever you try to remedy the temperature, it could result in an increase in VOCs or humidity. Temperature also plays a big factor in overall health. And if you have a young baby, temperature stress can cause SIDS. So it's probably a more important factor to control than you might give it credit for. So for me being a lizard wearing a human suit trying to brainwash you guys through YouTube videos and subliminal messages, I liked to keep the temperature on the low end of ideal, so around 19 degrees, which some people might think is a bit cold, but it's still within the optimum range. So to monitor all of those things, I found the perfect sensor, which is one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, the Akara. TVOX sensor. This thing will do all three of those and it has one of my favorite things in the entire world, an e-ink display. And you know I love e-ink displays, but my aim is to put one of these in three locations that I spend most of my time. My living room, my bedroom, and in here, the gallery, so I can continuously monitor the air quality. And it will continue to do so for over a year on a single charge with their two CR2450 batteries. Now on the display, it shows temperature, humidity, and a visual indicator of the overall air quality based on its VOC reading. The more leaves that are filled in, 
the better. You can switch this display to remove the VOC indicator if you wanted, or to change it for the actual VOC PPM number by double pressing the button on top or changing it in the app. Personally, I like the leaf indicator the best because it's a bit more friendly and it's something that's easy to understand. But it is small, very small, and although it's a very pretty looking device with its delicious e-ink display, realistically you're not going to be able to see it from the other side of the room, and unlikely that you'll be checking it every five minutes to see if your air is actually killing you. So, this is where my second solution to controlling the air environment comes into play, providing a clear visual cue that I'm at death's door. And as I'm working with the Akara TVOX sensor, I thought I would try and create most of today's solutions around Akara tech, because by using the automations that are exclusive to the Akara ecosystem, I can make this whole setup a little bit more advanced than just by using a third party smart home system like I normally would. So this is where some of the new Akara smart lighting comes in. In each room, I want to use a piece of lighting that is always in my peripheral to help indicate the air quality. And you know from my past reviews, I actually have two pieces of Akara lighting currently in use that's ideal for this. The first is the Akara T1 LED strip that sits behind my desk. This is actually already acting as a little status light, but for my security. When someone is snooping around the outside of the house, the central segment of the strip which is just under the monitor in my peripheral, turns green. So all I've done is replicate this segment to go red when the readings on my TVOC go above or below the ideals I mentioned earlier. This is perfect because it's right in front of me within my peripheral, so I will always know when something needs to be addressed. In my living room, I've decided to use the new Akara ceiling light, which was conveniently already in place from a review I did a few weeks back. This is an awesome piece of kit with a central light and fully independent RGB ring light. What will happen here is if the environment parameters aren't met, the main light will dim slightly if it's on and the ring will turn bright red. Again, this light is in peripherals at all times when I'm sitting in the living room. Now I haven't yet added a light indicator to the bedroom however, partly because I don't want it coming on in the middle of the night and waking me up if the air quality is bad, but also because a car have yet to do a simple RGB bulb to pair up to an already existing lamp. I'm still waiting for that, so if you're watching this Akara, hint hint. But at the very least, both the ceiling light and the LED strip are a great way to get alerts about the environment and to prompt some sort of rectification. But these are just single warnings that something is wrong. Without actually looking at the app, how do I know what needs to be rectified? Well, this is where the internal automation system from Akara comes into play. And the third piece of the puzzle is Akara's door and window sensors. Opening or closing your windows and doors is perhaps one of the quickest ways to solve a problem with your indoor air quality. If it's too hot, open your window. If it's too cold, shut it. Is the wood burner causing the atmosphere to have dangerous levels of VOCs? Probably open the back door to let the fresh air in. Or perhaps the relative humidity is too high early in the morning, just open your windows and allow the air to equalize to bring that relative humidity down. So to build these into the system, I've set them up as part of routines to help it recommend what I can do to solve the issues within the environment. If you take a look at the way you create automations within the Akara system, you can add ifs and thens. So in my case, I've set up things like if the VOC reading is high and the windows are closed, which is the window sensors, then turn the red ring light on the ceiling and send a push notification to my phone to say that the VOC count is high, open the windows. This makes this system not just visual, but it automatically tells me what's wrong and how to rectify it. The same with things like temperature. If the temperature is below 19 degrees and the windows are closed, then turn the light red and send a notification to my phone that says put the wood burner on or increase the heat. This is handy because if the windows are open and those sensors are triggered, it won't send that notification because it knows I'd be throwing money down the drain by turning the heating up but leaving the windows open. And this is where some of the automation comes into play too because I don't want to have to manually do everything. I mean, yes, look, manual intervention will always result in a quicker action, but it would be nice at least 
to automate some of it. So to help control this temperature, I'm using the Acara radiator valves, which I reviewed probably over a year back and have been running ever since. These will automatically help keep the temperature in the rooms at 19 degrees, opening and closing the radiator valves to maintain that sweet spot. Now, these do have their own onboard temperature sensors. However, you can use the TVOC as the temperature sensor for them. And by being remote and set away from the radiator, it means that it's a more accurate representation of the entire room temperature, not just near the radiator. Now, there's a few other devices I've put in with my smart home environment to help automate too, such as smart dehumidifiers and smart air purifiers that will turn on when necessary, although our Acara don't actually manufacture this type of kit at the moment. So I've relied on a few third party devices to help with this and build that into my Alexa routines. And you can add all manner of stuff to help automate, such as aircon units or humidifiers if you live in a dry environment. Now, with the TVOC reading, you can go directly through Alexa with the temperature. So you can trigger things like smart heaters that aren't compatible with the Acara system. But oddly, Alexa still won't natively support humidity or VOC readings from the TVOC. Thankfully, I found a way around this by using IFT to trigger an Alexa routine. So for example, if you have a smart dehumidifier or humidifier that connects to Alexa, the TVOC would send a trigger to IFT when humidity exceeds a set level, which in turn triggers an Alexa routine that would start the dehumidifier that's connected directly to the Alexa system. Again, this adds a level of complexity, but it adds a level of automation to controlling the environment so that I'm not constantly getting up and down, up and down to open and close the windows or turn the purifiers on or off. Now, unfortunately, there will always be a level of required manual intervention to create the perfect environment. Let's face it, because like I said earlier, manual intervention provides the quickest results. So with that in mind, it's probably a little bit impractical for me to keep getting notifications all the time for all of my rooms when the environmental measurements don't meet my ideals because I might not even be in that room or I might be on holiday on some Spanish coast. I wouldn't be traveling all the way home just to open the window a crack. It makes no sense. So this is where the most genius part of the system comes in. The Acara Presence Sensor FP2. Again, this is another product I've reviewed in the past. So largely, I'm just using a bunch of stuff that I already had for this system. But what this essentially does, for those that don't know, is it's a sensor that can tell if there's anybody present within a room, as well as actually being able to tell where that person is within that room. It's far more reliable than a motion sensor, which is exactly why I've chosen this to help my system understand whether it should be doing anything about the air quality or just leaving it be. It works a little bit like a mini radar, and it's perhaps one of the coolest pieces of tech I've reviewed in a good while. It's so accurate that it's capable of lighting up lamps only when you stand next to it, as I showed in my original review. So what I'm using this for is a notification status light and recommendations to rectify the environment to my ideal levels will only come through my phone and only automate as long as there is someone in the room. If there's no one there, then the notifications and automation stops in a way saving money because it's not lighting up and indicators aren't going off and the heaters and dehumidifiers aren't turning on to make the environment perfect for the ghosts that haunt the country club but it also saves my sanity by not sending me notifications about the gallery's air quality when i'm not in it this has been perhaps the most clever automation i've added to the system and it makes the whole thing truly smart and truly reactive to the people in the house but this i don't think has been the highlight of creating this system for me the highlight about the entire thing has been the cost Albeit some of it I already had, but Acara has been and remains one of the most versatile and best value smart home tech providers, making some really simple stuff, but with advanced features and for a price that won't break the bank. And actually, I believe I've timed this episode pretty well. So if you're watching this in March 2024, there's currently a spring sale on making their already well priced tech even cheaper. I'll drop a link below to their kit so you can check out the prices for yourself. But to give you a rough idea, the TVOC, which has been integral to this entire episode, is just £40 without discount, but currently it's £34 in the sale, which is superb value. But that 
pretty much concludes today's episode on how I'm using some smart home tech to create a better indoor environment and to prolong my life, hopefully. Sure, my system isn't perfect, and I'm sure there's tons of stuff that I haven't thought of or explored. So if you do have any automations or tech recommendations for helping keep your indoor air quality perfect, please do let me know in the comments below. I'm genuinely interested in seeing what solutions you guys have come up with. And if one of my automations or ideas have inspired you today, or I've put the fear of God in you that your home is trying to kill you in your sleep, then I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up and drop a message in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I'll see you back for another one soon.